The banner headline on the menu announces that Jesus is Lord. Having established that, the theme is picked up with a wall hanging, tracing Jesus' bloodline back to Adam. The restaurant's bloodline is a little more earthly. Buster Smith opened it in 1950 as a beer joint. Barbecue was phased in, and by 1957, his 20-year-old son, Mort, was cooking. Mort Smith is now the pit man, and he is good. Ken Miller is Old Plantation's newest owner, and they're still serving great barbecued beef, chicken, ribs, and Boston butt. The pork is indirectly cooked at 325 degrees for five or six hours with hickory. The cooker operates on a rotisserie principle. The only seasoning used is a little salt and pepper with some garlic powder. The sauce is Buster Smith's legacy. Signatures, ribs, fried pies, and crackling cornbread with crunchy pork fat nestled inside. On the outskirts of Tuscaloosa, in exotic-sounding Jerusalem Heights, is a laid-back shrine called Dreamland Barbecue Drive-In. It's a favorite hangout for network TV sports crews. In spite of that, people love it. Well, that's one of my favorite places. It's uh, <laughs> Tuscaloosa, Alabama. There, it's set back in the woods. It, likes, it looks like an Elks Club in heaven to me when I pull up out front. And uh, got the little pit back there. And I think those may be the best ribs that I've ever had anywhere. Don't go to Dreamland to graze the appetizers or sip wine. Their to-the-point menu offers ribs four ways and beer three. John Bishop is the model for the logo and the main man, though his son and daughter pretty much oversee the day-to-day -day operation. The ribs are cooked directly over hickory coals in two small pits. They're done fast and temperature is controlled with a garden hose and an experienced eye. The pit men are the key to Dreamland's great ribs. So is John Bishop's distinctive sauce. He'll mail it to you, and it travels well. But to really get the drift of Dreamland, you have to be here. Mississippi, the magnolia state, which is its flower. Bird, the apparently universal mockingbird. Home of a scale model of the Holy Land and the country's first tobacco spitting contest. Favorite son, Elvis. It's a little hurricane prone, at least around the Gulf Coast. When Camille blew into Gulfport in 1969, Ann Jack's Barbecue was the only restaurant that stayed open, thus becoming Ann Jack's famous barbecue. Jack and Ann Meek started the place on the side of an old country store. It still projects that image. The Meeks with son Michael not only create a homey atmosphere, but serve swell barbecue too. This is an accomplishment in an area that's loaded with fresh seafood. The little unit that fed the hurricane workers is still around, but most of the barbecue is done on this big time rotisserie unit. And Jack's own sauce, a sweet tomato based number, complements their signature ribs and brisket. They also offer a send-up to nearby New Orleans, red beans. Northwest, the cannons of Vicksburg quietly overlook the Mississippi. Now the smoke and fire is down below at Goldie's Trail Barbecue. It was started by Gola Marshall in 1960. He began barbecuing in Arkansas, but when the county went dry, he sensibly left. Arkansas's loss was Vicksburg's gain. Goldie's nephew, Randy Wright, runs the show now. They cook pork shoulders, beef brisket, sausage, and chicken, but ribs are the big seller. Pit man Johnny Metagrit doesn't know the cooking temperature. He says he just keeps watching. It's a system that must work. The authors of Real Barbecue tabbed Goldie's Barbecue as good as we've ever had. Signature, barbecued chicken and ribs, both with Goldie's spicy chili powder lace sauce. Finally, meet Smokey Hale from Macomb, Mississippi. He enjoys perfect credentials for a barbecue expert. They include two degrees in political science, designer and manufacturer of high fashion women's panties, service with the Army, counterintelligence and the FBI, and a stint as a rodeo bull rider. 
He is author of a barbecue cookbook and now presents his recipe for rabbit. He begins with preparation of the basting sauce. We're doing a, a sauce for rabbit that's not a traditional barbecue sauce, but it combines with the mild flavor of rabbit real well. Uh, I call it Welch's rabbit. We start with uh, a white grape juice, about one cup. We'll do uh, about four tablespoons of prepared mustard. About an equal amount of white wine Worcester sauce of horseradish. That's the taste. If you don't like uh, the taste or heat of horseradish, you can cut it down. Corn oil or peanut oil, which has no cholesterol. We're also going to add, um, well, let's put a little thyme. I'm going to put about a half teaspoon. Now I'm going to put on the rabbit um, fresh ground cayenne, and we're going to ground some black pepper onto it. Then we'll baste with the sauce before the rabbit goes onto the grill originally. We're going to saturate the outside. Remember that it had a little oil in it. And we're going to let that dry before we put it on the grill. After the rabbit dries, it goes on the grill and is basted again. The rabbit is barbecued for one and a half to two hours at 200 degrees. It is basted several times during cooking. The finished rabbit is basted once more before carving. Loin section, cut down either side of the backbone. And the loin, that slides out. Now this is very tender, very delicious meat. Georgia, the peach state, flower, Cherokee rose, bird, brown thrasher. It began as a debtor's colony, some debtors. It's now home base for Coca-Cola. Also the home of the only tree in the world that legally owns the ground it grows on. Favorite son, Ty Cobb. Most important contribution to mankind, Brunswick Stew. Just south of Atlanta in Fayetteville is Malheur's. It registers important barbecue style points. For instance, a street named after the owner and an interesting array of cars in the lot. Also, big old pits with lots of wood and a rocking chair for set dressing. Inside, there is an inventory of artistically correct junk pig statues. Third generation barbecuer Kenneth Malier also represents the formal relationship of barbecue and politics. He's a judge, and if you're sequestered in his jury, you've got to hope he feeds you. They do beef and pork at Malier's. The pork is pulled, chopped, and put on toasted white bread. They serve a volcanic hot sauce that goes well with the sandwich. They also offer an unusual item with the barbecue, pickled vegetables. You know the old saying, when in Fayetteville, you should eat the barbecue the way they eat it, because they know something about the, the way they're doing it. If they put uh, tomato and pickle on it, eat them with tomato and pickle on it. Give it a try. I was eating barbecue at C&K in St. Louis, and I said, well, and I had the ribs, and I said, well, what else does everybody get around here? And they said, well, snoots. OK, snoots. And, Give me an order of snoots, and it's uh, deep-fried pig noses. And uh, turns out that like maybe three or four deep-fried pig noses are enough to suit you for a certain extended length of time. Yeah, like a lifetime. Jackson is a small community, also south of Atlanta in timber country. They've managed to retain some small town niceties. Just outside of town is Fresh Air Barbecue, one of the few places in the country where you can read the entire menu from the road. It's been here since 1929, and little has changed other than some paneling and a poured cement floor. They cook two or three tons of fresh ham a week over oak and hickory and make their own Brunswick stew. 
The pit owes its cooking efficiency to the health department. They ruled that the old open pit had to be closed. So the smoke from the firebox was simply routed 20 feet to the new closed pit in front. The design was a happy accident. Fresh hams are now perfectly cooked in a neat 24 hours. Signature, the entire menu. Now to the postcard charm of Savannah. Like other southern coastal cities, seafood is plentiful, but there's barbecue too. Johnny Harris is not exactly a joint, but it serves what an international guidebook calls the best barbecue in the South. The high-powered operation started in 1924 and proves that with barbecue, looks can deceive. It looks like a 30 supper club, which is what it was. Today, barbecue is the lead item cooked on this state-of-the-art carousel unit. Johnny Harris serves beef, pork, lamb, and chicken, along with baby back and spare ribs. Seasonings vary. Spare ribs get a dry rub, while the baby backs are marinated in Johnny Harris's sauce, doctored with other ingredients. Chickens are also marinated in this mixture. The Boston butt, on the other hand, goes into the cooker unseasoned. Signature, barbecued pork sandwich, ribs, and coconut cream pie. The last stop in Georgia is not Vienna, as in the waltz, but Vienna, as in barbecue. It is the home of a cook-off called the Big Pig Jig, and perennial winners are the guys on the volunteer fire department team. They do a lot of unusual dishes, but feature their world-class ribs this time. Watch for a few cooking tips, but forget the sauce. Asking a man for his sauce recipe, a Georgian once said, is like asking to borrow his wife. John Causey puts it more simply. He says he'll give you the recipe, but then he'll have to kill you. If we're gonna prepare our spare ribs to barbecue, uh, we use spare ribs uh, and uh, get them at room temperature. And after we get them at room temperature, we take them and what we call is skin them or peel them, skin on the bone side. And we skin this membrane off the backside. It makes it easier to cut after they are after they're cooked. After we skin them, then we, we take them and, and trim some of the excess fat off of them. We've got a, our own special rub. We call it a sprinkle. It's a, a mixture of various things that we use to put on the ribs prior to cooking. As I had mentioned before, we get, try to get them at room temperature before we put them on the grill. We put this on and leave them somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour, depending on the temperature and this will dissolve to a degree. Let them heat through for about an hour, and then we baste these uh, with melted butter, simply to dissolve what's left on there so you won't have a grainy taste. In this particular part of the country, we, I reckon you call them slick ribs. We like them without a grainy taste, and, and, that's, and it helps to, the butter helps to absorb this into meat to enhance the flavor of it. Cook these on indirect heat, somewhere in the neighborhood of, depending on the ribs again, anywhere from five to seven hours. Uh, as fun as it may sound, the outside temperature has a uh, bearing on how long we cook them. In the last hour of cooking, we baste them with our sauce that we're going to use on them when we serve. We like to serve these ribs ready to eat and uh, think that they are well enough to eat without having to put any sauce on them afterwards. We don't like to put sauce on them earlier than maybe the last 45 minutes an hour because we don't want it to blister or turn brown. It doesn't have a lot of effect on the taste, but it doesn't make them look good as, as well as we would like for them to look. Finally, our pilgrimage takes us to the magic glory of barbecue, the Carolinas. What we find here is not a single approach, but enormous diversity between and within the states. It all has to do with sauces. First sauces actually were on the East Coast in the Carolinas and Virginia, and those sauces even today are still vinegar and spices. No tomato, no sweetener. People were barbecuing on the East Coast so long ago that it was before people ate tomatoes. It was back when they thought tomatoes were poisonous. And as the population migrated west, then there was this the famous guy who stood on the court steps in Virginia and ate a tomato and didn't die. <laughs> and somebody in the back must have said, let's put that in the sauce. <clears throat> so that went in. Then as sugars 
started coming in from the Caribbean, people would add those. So as you go across the country, the sauce sort of changes color, changes consistency. It gets thicker, it gets sweeter. And then there's a little uh, odd spot like uh, the middle of South Carolina where it's mustard sauce. It's yellow. And the first time you see that on barbecue, you think uh, maybe there was a nuclear hit around here somewhere that affected all the barbecue sauce. South Carolina, the Palmetto State. Flower, jasmine, bird, wren. Favorite son, the father of secession, Robert Rett. Favorite daughter and letter turner, Vanna White. Most unusual barbecue operation, Maurice Bessinger's Piggy Park in West Columbia. They once sold 12 tons of barbecue in one day. As John Madden might say, Maurice has got all the stuff going for him. Like his own church, the Lighthouse Mission, fulfilling, even surpassing, barbecue's religious requirements. He qualifies politically, too. Maurice ran for governor, but lost. His restaurant is a winner, though. They'll sell barbecue to you any way you want it, over the counter, in the car, or driving through with the car. Maurice even markets low-cal barbecue. But the thing at Piggy Park is the sauce. That was my dad's recipe, and I've developed it up some since then. And uh, it's a South Carolina sauce that we liked here that was originated here. Well, it originated in Germany, I don't know. But I know he, he, his people came from Germany. And it's, uh, I think it has a German spice taste to it. Signatures, ribs with crackling, chicken with everything. Maurice seems to view life like a Christian holding five aces. And no wonder. When I opened here, there were 60 drive-in restaurants in metropolitan Columbia here. Now we're the only ones left. Charleston, with New Orleans, is one of the oldest cities in the South. And like New Orleans, has its own special food. They call it low country, referring to the coastal geography and applied to the cooking. They serve great dishes here with even greater names like Frogmore stew, she crab soup, cooter soup, and Hoppin' John. Barbecue is big, too. Bryant's is a small 55-seat place that offers a serious sampling of low country food. John Copleston oversees a relaxed operation that employs an electric smoker. Ribs, chicken, and lean pork butts are cooked at a low, slow 180 degrees. Once again, the latitude and barbecue styles is seen with Bryant's smoking technique. Forget the wood pile. They smoke their meat with a piece of hickory that looks like it is part of a Rubik's Cube. Signatures, the pig out platter. And Carolina stew, barbecued hash over rice. Amidst the reminders of Hurricane Hugo and within a cannon shot of Fort Sumter is gorgeous Sullivan's Island. It's the site of a low country cooking lesson from popular caterer Jamie Westendorf. So let's try his pork butt with three sauces. This cut of pork that I'm using today is a Boston butt. This is the one I prefer to use as opposed to a ham or shoulder because they're smaller cuts of meat, generally trim, one bone to work with. It takes a lot less time to cook. Jamie seasons the pork with black pepper, seasoned salt, and apple cider vinegar. All this is left in the pan that helps to make the barbecue sauce. So what I'm going to do now is set these aside before I put them in the grill. Add a little bit more apple cider, some soy sauce. Also add about a half cup granulated sugar. Good. Apple cider, soy sauce, and common table sugar. If you're not cooking and you're just making a sauce, then you could use liquid smoke or some type of smoke, but I don't use it. And what I'm going to do is put this pan in the grill and let the grill itself give it the smoke flavor. The cut that we were talking about, the Boston butt, comes from this section here. So now we're looking at a finished product here. These butts have been on seven hours at about 350 degrees. Um, basically, you know when they're cooked, when they just start falling apart like this. So this is the smoked finished product. The barbecue sauce is thick and rich. We'll just come over here. Now, all we slide these out to chop or pull. Actually, they're just ready to come apart like that. Slide the bones out. 
Jamie serves mustard and ketchup-based sauces using the soy, sugar, vinegar as a start. Some people prefer really fine shredded, but for the most part, that's what we want right there. Just regular ketchup. You could pretty much will stop now, and this is just a normal ketchup barbecue. And what I like to do is to satisfy everybody, I, about half of it I'll do ketchup base. And on this half, I'll do a mustard base, which is also a favorite in the low country of South Carolina. Jamie combines the chopped meat and sauces. For everybody that's into the tomato base. North Carolina, the Tar Heel State. Flower, dogwood, bird cardinal, birthplace of the things you can't smoke on planes. Favorite son, Oprah Winfrey's boyfriend. Favorite daughter, Ava Gardner. They don't need lawyers to start arguments here. They have barbecue. Discuss it with a North Carolinian, and they assume the demeanor of an archbishop at a pro-choice rally. In fact, never mind barbecue, don't even mention Brunswick stew. And I don't, you don't even want to get into it. I, I wrote a newspaper column about Brunswick stew, and the, the, the North Carolina papers ran a disclaimer. <laughs> this is not exactly the way we make our Brunswick stew. Lexington and the western part of the state has a population of 15,000 and supports 16 barbecue joints. One of the best is Lexington number one. When you say barbecue here, you're saying pork shoulder cooked nine or 10 hours over hickory and oak. The pork is either pulled or sliced before joining Lexington's tangy tomato-based sauce. They offer a curious coleslaw, too. Cabbage, sugar, salt, pepper, cayenne, and vinegar are standard. The tomato sauce is not. Signature, chopped pork plate with hush puppies. Moving east means thinner, hotter sauce, and Wilbur's in Goldsboro. They put out an impressive array of southern classics like chicken and pan gravy, country ham, catfish, Brunswick stew, and a ton of hush puppies. But barbecue is boss. They use only oak wood and cook only whole hogs. The pulled meat is chopped, and note that it is seasoned with Wilbur's vinegary hot sauce during the chopping process. Signature, barbecue with hush puppies. A little further east is Kinston, gateway to the Carolina coast. Just follow the catering truck to King Brothers Barbecue. It exemplifies the topsy growth of many barbecue places. Over 50 years ago, Frank King left farming and opened a little store, then a pool annex serving hot dogs. Then he offered an occasional whole hog. Then they expanded to a teen drive-in with barbecue and necking. Then more additions culminated in this thousand seat restaurant with a hundred menu items. The barbecue is pork shoulder, chopped then seasoned, not only with a salt-based mixture, but also with King's own sauce. Signatures, pork with crackling and hush puppies, and banana pudding. This guy is on his way to a barbecue at Mark and Wendy Andrews' house. They live just outside Deep Run, North Carolina. Both cook in competition, and they come by it naturally. Wendy's dad, Thomas Heath, has been barbecuing since he was a kid. He designed this cooker. He calls it the ugly old thing. It uses gas and is doing a job on some chickens. Meanwhile, Mark starts the hog on his gas fuel unit by spraying salt water over the pig. It will help brown the skin. The right equipment is very important in cooking whole hogs. Correct, even temperature is critical. One of the advantages of gas is that unlike wood or charcoal, it doesn't require constant tending. If the cooking temperature falls below 170 degrees for too long, a wildfire bacteria can develop, and you can kiss your pig goodbye. Cooking time for whole hogs depends on their sizes and the outside temperature. The best guide is a spot thermometer check. Internal temperature of the meat should be 185 degrees. Other than saltwater spray, the only seasoning for this hog will be barbecue sauce injected into the meat toward the end of the cooking. 
And after 4,000 miles of secret sauces, it's refreshing to present Thomas Heath's real North Carolina gourmet barbecue sauce. He begins with 32 ounces of ketchup and apple cider vinegar. You rinse it out, rinse your bottle out. Be sure to get all that damn ketchup, because that's good. Squirt it and help mix up what you done put in there. Put about a good, good cup of brown sugar in it. Well, I usually have a cup and sort of guess at it with the cup, but I've done enough I can sort of guess at it like this, too. Put three ounces of Texas peat in it, about three. This is six ounces. I try to get half of it. Texas peat is a thin pepper sauce. Don't measure nothing, really. Taste it when you get it made. If it don't suit you, add something else to it. Put about a third of a cup of black pepper in it. Red pepper. Put about two, two good tablespoons of red pepper in it. Guess at it, though. You don't never measure it. Damn, that ain't wet. Add one half cup of salt. The sauce is finished with more vinegar. Then you see you got a gallon of salt. Thomas mixes, then adjusts the seasoning. Let's see if it's too sharp. It's a little bit sharp. Let me put just a little bit more brown sugar in. See, your brown sugar, all your brown sugar does is take the sharp vinegar taste off it, away from it. And everybody out here makes sauce makes it different. There ain't no two people even come close to one another. Take your finger in that and taste it. The sauce is strained, then injected into the hog. They'll turn it once, then we're just about ready for a North Carolina pig picking. Meanwhile, Thomas's chickens get doused. The foil cover steams the meat and helps infuse it with the sauce. The hog is done, and this meat has to be tasted to be believed. A restaurant can't really equal it. Mark and Wendy have only won a couple of prizes, but they're as proud of them as the guys with a room full, and they should be. This portrait is a good way to end the grand tour. It says it all. Family tradition, a little bragging, and the dash of humor. The things that make American barbecue great. And don't forget, Scarlett O'Hara launched Gone with the Wind at a barbecue. Grandpa Joe had insisted on it in the Grapes of Wrath. Liz Taylor fainted at one in Giant. And Hawkeye Pierce lusted after it for a whole episode of M.A.S.H. So keep barbecuing and remember the cure's credo. Great barbecue makes you want to slap your granny up beside the head. Of course, if it doesn't turn out right, she gets to slap you. I'm Tom T. Hall. Thanks for watching. And now, raise your right hand. I accept my duty. I accept, I accept my, my duty. duty. To be an, an American Royal World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off Judge. To an American <laughs> Barbecue Cook-Off Judge. <laughs> so that truth. So, so that truth. Justice. Justice. Excellence in barbecue. Excellence in barbecue. And the American way of life. And the American, <laughs> the American way of life. life. May be strengthened and preserved forever. May be, may be strengthened and preserved forever. We base the cooks, we don't base the meat. <laughs>